throwing shapes at the Paris Opera, in Beyoncé's videos, or in hit stage musicals. Josefa Madoki's choreography and dance has seen her rack up an eclectic portfolio, bringing a blend of classic, hip-hop, and underground styles to prestigious venues around the world. Her latest creations being performed at Paris's Musée d'Orsay and Josefa's in the studio with us to tell us more. Hi, Josefa. Hello. <laughs> now, your upcoming piece is called Disco. It's being performed in the entrance hall of the Musée d'Orsay, that mm -hmm. huge space filled with statues. This is a meeting of two really different artistic styles. So you have, like, classical art on the two one side. Two different worlds. Two different worlds, <laughs> and then underground dance. Mm -hmm. How do they mix together? Is there a clash there? Uh, that's the, the challenge of this experience, because we will be there for three days in the Musée d'Orsay. And we're going to perform disco, as you said, uh, right in the middle of the, the nef, surrounded by paintings, sculptures. The audience will be also around us. We're going to put a disco ball <laughs> in the middle of the museum. So, and we're going to have a DJ playing like uh, disco music, electro music. So it's definitely like a mix of this uh, two world, two energy. But uh, yeah, we're really exciting about that. Sounds like it's going to feel like a nightclub. Well, let's get a taste of yeah. your style. This is disco. <laughs> So it looks super high energy and glam. Now, this piece is part of the Cultural Olympiad here in Paris. It's one of the many artistic events mm -hmm. that are planned to celebrate the Games. How do you see the performing arts within this sports programme? Do you think dance fits into an international sports event like the Olympics? Yes, because I think, like, actually dance, it's in a way, it's a sport, OK? Because we, we give a lot of energy, we use our body, we train our body as a like as a sport, like uh, athletes, mm. you know? So for me, it makes sense, definitely. And they're similar worlds. And we see that, that this year dance is coming into the games because there's the introduction of the break, break dancing. Break dance, yeah. How do you think that will go down? I'm really curious about that, I guess, like everybody. And uh, I think it's going to be great. It's going to be great for the culture, for hip hop. And yeah, people, a lot of people, I guess, will discover this culture through the Olympics, so it's, it's a nice thing. Yeah, it's like you say before, two worlds coming mm -hmm. together. Now, I saw the acronym in that video there spelled out DISCO. Don't, Don't initiate. initiate social contact with others. Yeah. <laughs> what does what? that mean? <laughs> I mean, I created uh, this piece after the pandemic, and uh, my idea was to talk about the, the freedom we gained after the lockdown, because it was really like, a tough moment for me and I guess for the rest of the world. And I just wanted to celebrate uh, working culture. So working is coming from the, from the club. It's a queer culture coming from LA, beginning of the 70s. And they start creating dancing uh, in the club. And one of the first place who were like locked down, it was the club if you remember that. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, how are we gonna experience the club after the pandemic? How are we gonna reconnect with people, with the dance floor, with the music, with our body? Uh, so that's the, that was the question about that. And also I wanted to, to highlight the, the working culture, putting uh, working dancers on stage. So we are eight working dancers on stage, plus a DJ because the music is really important. So it's like the center of this of this culture. And uh, yeah, so that's why I was like, OK, let's try to figure out how we're going to experience the dance floor and the nightlife after mm. the, the pandemic. It's interesting because the nightlife then becomes all the nightclub becomes like a metaphor for ultimate freedom in a yes. way. And you mentioned whacking there, this subculture that comes from the late 1970s, from the queer community in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. How did you encounter it the first time? Why did, when did you get interested? Because that's before your time. Yeah, uh, I discovered working through a Japanese dancer called Yoshie Koda in 2005. 
She was in Paris performing in a, in a competition, dance competition called Just Debout. And she was uh, doing a judge demo, mixing, locking and whacking. And I was just amazed by the way she was moving. I was like, oh, what she's doing? And people were like, oh, I think she's doing some whacking moves. I just start like traveling everywhere to learn about uh, whacking. So I, I met the, the, the pioneers, let's say, in Los Angeles, in New York. I went everywhere and I was searching for information everywhere I could. Yeah. Well, someone who's very familiar with the way you work and these influences is choreographer Sidi Larbi Sharkawi. We yeah. asked him a little bit more about it. Here's more from him. What is very unique with Josepha is that she is many things at once. Of course, we know her from whacking, but I knew her as a dancer before, and she had this capacity to include different styles and to express multiple ideas at the same time. To work with her is always to find like a soul sister who listens to those around her, but is also very clear. So she is someone with enormous talent. Now, you two started working together quite a while back now, but what would you say is the biggest lesson you learned from him? What was the takeaway? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Labi is one of my biggest uh, inspiration as a choreographer, dancer, and also human being. I learned a lot uh, working with him, and uh, I love the fact that he's uh, multi cultural as a person, but also as an artist, and is not worried to go in different ways. So he's not only contemporary dancer working with a ballet company. He can work with ballet company and then working with Beyonce the next day and doing like a, a commercial the next day. Uh, it's like, I'm like, wow, that's um, really inspiring. Also as a, as a dancer, when I was dancing a lot for him, uh, I was also, I had a lot of opportunities. Well, I wanted to talk about one of them. Apparently in 2018, you got an invitation to go to the Louvre, I believe for the first time to the Louvre yeah. Museum. And it was quite a special mission there. Tell us yeah. about that. Labi called me, <laughs> like he used to do, like, ah, oh, hi, Madoki, what are you doing? Uh, uh, are you in Paris? And I was in Paris. Say, okay, yeah, can you come? I have something to, to work with you. I was like, okay. So I, I met him in the uh, Opéra Garnier, in the dance studio. And he was like, okay, I cannot talk about that in the phone, but actually we're going to work for Beyonce the video. So you're here for that. So we're going to create something for the, like a choreography for this, uh, for mm. this uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, what was it like to work with Beyoncé? What was, uh, it was a unique experience. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that. Uh, because, yeah, Beyoncé, she's just uh, one of the most important artists, I guess, uh, from our generation. And she's really inspiring, really strong, really creative. And being surrounded by her and her, her team, uh, yeah, it was really unforgettable experience, especially in the Musée du Louvre, mm. uh, empty Musée du Louvre, which is already like always like busy place. It was empty and I was I had the chance to dance just in front of uh, Mona Lisa. So it was uh, also like a specific uh, uh, experience because I felt like she was like looking at me <laughs> while, when I was dancing. So. Beyonce was there and Mona Lisa was back there and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Truly. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's an unforgettable cool. experience. Now, you featured as a dancer in plenty of projects, but you quickly shifted to choreography, working on the hit musical here in France, Starmania. Uh, Josepha also worked with musician Luzana Yakuza, rapper Maitre Gims on their videos, and with director Thomas Joly. He's the artistic director for the Olympics opening ceremony coming up in July. Well, you two worked together on his version of the opera Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. on stage here in Paris. Let's take a look. <laughs> so this is one of the classic love stories. It's been reinterpreted hundreds of times, thousands mm -hmm. of times. How did you bring your personal touch to this production? Well, uh, the idea for, uh, for Thomas, it was uh, to have whacking in this, uh, in this uh, 
piece. And I really enjoy the, um, the process to go deep into the Charles uh, music because I'm not really used to this kind of music. And the challenge for me it was to really try to, yeah, to bring whacking in this, in this uh, music style. But actually, it fits really well. <laughs> it fits really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, the goal when you are a whacking dancer, you have to be able to show the music in your body. And in the disco music, you have a lot of instrument already. So I just took the, the rules of whacking and I put it in the opera, in the Charles uh, music. Mm. So it was kind of, um, at the end, it really makes sense for me and also for the dancer who were performing this okay. piece. Yeah. Now, finally, we asked you for a cultural tip and you pointed us in the direction of an exhibition here in Paris. It's at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs mm -hmm. and it focuses on the work of fashion designer Iris van Herpen. What did you love about that? Uh, well, I'm working in my next piece called Haute Couture, uh -huh. and I'm currently I'm really going into different exhi exhibition about fashion, and I discovered the work of Iris von Erpen, and I really loved it because I felt like it was really unique, and really creative. Yeah, I love the fact like she's using uh, like the the clothes like kind of a piece like a unique piece of yeah. of, of art. Yeah, very visionary. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. We'll leave you with a look at Iris's bold sculptural creations. And Josefa Madoki's Whacking Weekend will take place from April 26th at the Musée d'Orsay, featuring conferences, battles, and of course, performance. Do check it out if you're in town. Otherwise, mm -hmm. do tune in to Arts24 next time here on France 24. Bye for now.